Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have a most amazing guest. I'm really excited to talk to him. But first, you know, we have a few brief announcements before we dive right into the good stuff, because y'all know I don't like a bunch of fluff. We're just going to dive right in and talk to our wonderful guest today. However, I do want to remind you that if you missed last week's episode, then you missed the big announcement that we are bringing back in-person workshops. They're going to be safe. They're going to be a little bit distanced, but they are going to be awesome, just like they were pre-COVID. I cannot wait to meet you in person and workshop wholesale bundles together. So if you are ready, you are finally ready to gather around a few awesome Amazon sellers to learn how to become a confident wholesale bundler. I can't wait to meet you. Go to mommyincome.com slash workshop. We have two dates available. One is sooner than later. One's later than sooner, but sign up for which one is best for you because I can't wait to help you in person, side by side, build your first few bundles that you know you're going to kill it with. I'm so excited to meet you there. Mommyincome.com slash workshop. Remember, Friday night is the meet and greet. We'll have some dinner and some, some cocktails and get to know one another. Saturday, we will workshop all day. And then Sunday will be the optional trade show walkthrough where you can get to know vendors. You can sign up for accounts. You can have really important conversations to secure your wholesale bundle future. So I can't wait to meet you at the wholesale, um, Confident Wholesale Bundlers workshop. I'm so excited to get back in person. So we'll see you in August or January. Sign up mommyincome.com slash workshop. And of course, podcast listeners get an amazing coupon code. So go to when you go check out it's workshop 50 and you're going to save a little chunk of money. So I can't wait to meet you there. And now let's talk about our guest today. We're going to take a minute and we're going to talk to Stephen Summers. He is the co-founder of Marketplace Heroes, an online education and services company that helps people all over the world learn how to sell their own products globally on Amazon from scratch. Y'all know I love step-by-step all the way from the bottom to the top type stuff. He is, this is impressive. Just take a breath, okay? Together with his business partner, he sold over $12 million in products and has helped Over 7,000 people learn how to start their own businesses on Amazon, a true hero here. So I cannot wait to introduce you now to Stephen Smothers. Well, Stephen Summers, gosh, I'm so sorry. Stephen, welcome to the show. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. I tell you what, you were talking about cocktails, you were talking about dinner at your event, and I just couldn't help myself but dream of that. So I wish you all the best with that. I think it's a great opportunity for everybody. Go to Kristen's event, make it happen. There we go. I'm just excited that I get to speak to an Irishman and you can speak to me in your beautiful accent that I've always loved. So tell us a little bit more about not your business you, but your your you. Sure. Yes. So as mentioned, I live in Ireland and I am almost 34 years old. Just to give some context, I am married to the wonderful Danielle and I have a little two-year-old son called Harvey. And uh, we just live here in Ireland. We just bought our uh, home actually early last year. So we're really settled in here. I grew up here in Wexford, but I actually lived in Northern Ireland for a number of years, which actually is part of the UK. For those of you who don't know, there's two two countries here in Ireland, both uh, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, really complicated political nonsense. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, um, I love playing golf. I love chilling out and I love chatting to amazing people like you. So I'm really happy to be here and share as much as I can. And uh, that's it, Jen. Very simple. Awesome. So let's start a little bit before Amazon. Let's, what did you do prior to helping over 7,000 people start businesses? Yeah, well, <laughs> I was trying to be a rock star. I was playing music. and I played in a band called Million Dollar Shoes here in Ireland for a number of years. And I was working as a data processor at the time, which is the most boring job in the world, in case you didn't know. Uh, All I did was I would type information from forms into a computer, back to the form, back to the computer all day long, every day. So I wasn't exactly, you know, starting out as a big entrepreneur or anything like that. But while I was uh, in my teens, I used to organize a lot of concerts and stuff like that for the band. So I suppose I was pretty entrepreneurial with that type of stuff. So I was working in the job. I moved to Dublin, the capital city of Ireland, when I was about 19. And I was working this job and doing the band thing. 
did that for a couple of years and you might have guessed the band didn't work out. That's why I'm here today. Uh, but again, uh, it was meant to be that it didn't work out. And of course, I got really depressed. I started drinking too much. I started eating too much. So I got fat and lazy for a couple of years. And uh, I was really pretty lost, actually, for a little while. And it wasn't, it wasn't a, a too nice of a period of time in my life. However, I met my now wife, Danielle, back then. And one day we went to a bookshop. And I was about 21, nearly 22 at the time. And I found this book called How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be by Jack Canfield. And that book now is called The Success Principles. It's a much bigger book nowadays. And I read this book and I instantly started making changes. I was like, stop eating the bad food, start taking some healthy habits on. And I started making some changes. And one of the biggest changes I made was I said to myself, you know, I don't want to work in this job forever. So what can I do? So I'd done three years of a business college, let's call it. I did marketing in my third year. I didn't finish college. I wasn't really loving it. And, but I did actually start to learn a lot about business in college. I started reading all these business books and business theory, and I became pretty obsessed with it. And so I thought I'll do something in business. So like a lot of people, I started Googling how to make money online. And for anybody who's done that before, you know what comes up. Not I so. Hope it's, I hope it's both of our companies now. <laughs> That's what I hope. Nowadays, yes. Back then, <laughs> Man, it was there was some terrible stuff back then uh, that I, I tried out. None of it worked for me. You know, I bought loads of courses, did very little with those courses. I was really not much of an implementer. And uh, heading up to my 23rd birthday, I got a bit of fortune in that my aunt called me, who I didn't see too often, but she heard I was looking to start a business. I, at that time, I'd settled on the fact that I was going to sell physical items because I was like, I'm not an expert in anything. I don't have very much to offer there, but I can sell physical products. So she heard I was interested in that, called me and said, I've got a friend called Robert. He does this. So I was like, fantastic. She said, do you want to meet him? I said, doubly fantastic. So it just so happened they were going to a comedy gig in Dublin where I lived at the time. And uh, we met up. And I, this guy is six foot two, big beard, loves drinking beer. And I was just like, this isn't the typical mentor I thought I would have, but uh, <laughs> see how this goes. So I got chatting to him and I realized this guy is amazing. He's so knowledgeable. He was pretty successful at the time. They had their own warehouses. Uh, they did some wholesale stuff at the time. They used to buy from wholesalers. They also did some private label, which we now do mostly, which is obviously selling your own branded products uh, online. And so I just decided to quit my job, go and learn from this guy. So I worked in his warehouse for about nine months and I started selling some of his secondhand products, things that were returns or whatever on eBay and teaching myself all that kind of stuff, you know, HTML, CSS, get the listings looking nice and learning tons and tons and tons. Meanwhile, still reading my business books. And I began to apply some of what I was reading in the books to the business. And all of a sudden, Robert and I started finding better ways to do things, different ways to do things. And after nine months of working together, we decided to start a new company, restart everything, get rid of the warehouses, get rid of the staff and go all in selling our own products on Amazon, but specifically using Amazon FBA. And I'm sure everybody in your channel is more than aware of what FBA is. So I won't, I won't explain too much about that. And really, uh, we, we just put everything into it over a bit, the course of about 18 months we found completely new products in multiple different categories. We put one house brand that sold all those products underneath it. And uh, yeah, we got the business up to doing nearly $2 million within about 18 months. And then we did that for a number of years. And life was good. We used to go to the States together with our families and go to Disney and Universal and all those nice things. Uh, but then people started asking, like, how are you two weirdos selling stuff and going off to Disney all day? What's going on? So we started showing some people around us in around 2014, uh, how we were doing it. They started getting some success and you know how it is with your own programs. Word kind of travels fast. And so, yeah, we had no audience. We had, we had nothing at all. But in 2014, we released a, a really basic version of Marketplace Superheroes program. And in 2015, we really launched properly. We had some people wanted to promote what we were doing and things like that. I suppose fast forwarding to today, we have uh, now over 8,000 students, actually. I need to update a little bio. Uh, and also, we um, have a freight company called Superhero Freight, where we actually ship our own members' products as well as our own products from China 
to our warehouse in the US with a big warehouse in Houston, with a warehouse in Canada, Australia, and the UK. So we've really become like a logistics partner for all the people in our private label program. And uh, this year, 2021, we're on track to ship 8 million units, uh, which we're really excited about from China to all those different countries. And so, yeah, we've loads of success stories, which is awesome. We're still selling on the platform. We invested a number of our members. Uh, but really, we're just two regular Irish dudes, and we figured out a little bit about Amazon, and uh, you know, here we are. I love your story, and I love how it's so. It, it, a lot of it coincides. When you said 2014, I was like, oh, that's the same. We have a similar trajectory there. I was just figuring out Amazon, and I, I started with eBay 2003, just kind of necessities to make ends meet, and then yeah. you know, kind of moved in through Amazon, and kind of was like, wow, this is a bigger thing. And then yeah. around 2014 is when people started saying, hey, well, this is really doing good for you. Like, tell us more, and you know, that Ooh. sort of thing. So we're kind of the same OG veterans here kind of tracking on the same line there i mean it seems like you just yesterday but it's like wow that was really seven years ago <laughs> i know so. i know it's amazing how, but also i'm sure you found this as well when you start out with something like this it, it takes time to you to have people go through your program and get success and because you know especially with private label a little bit different to what you you're doing over there uh, you know, it takes a little bit more time to private label. You have to produce your products, import them, and it takes time for them to start ranking on Amazon and stuff like that. So, you know, for the first maybe year or two, we would get a lot of success stories, but it would take time. Whereas now, after being in it for so long, we're just getting them every single week now, and it's it's great and it's been cool. You know, I mean, we love we love our clients, we love what we do, and yeah, I just like love coming on here and talking to people like yourself, and obviously. We're going to have you on our show very soon. So we're really going to be OGs together. That's right. That's awesome. I'm very excited about that. But I'm also like, what I love about some of your story here and what you what you are really teaching your people is that like, now for, for my listeners, you guys know you're bracing yourselves, right? Because I, I'm not a hater at all of private label. I do my own yeah. private label, but um, for my beginners and for people that are just starting out. Um, I love to be able to give them multiple avenues. And so when someone hears, oh, you're having a super private labeler on your show, I'm going to be like, yeah, we're going to ask some hard questions. Um, just because I feel like it's really necessary. And obviously with you just telling the full truth. And, and I love what you Absolutely. just said already, which was it takes time. Everyone now, just like when we were Googling back in the day of like how to make money online, right? You know, it's like, it's like now it's, um, People are always looking for that quick fix, that instant gratification that I want to sell it now today and somehow get super uber famous and then do whatever I want. And we know the reality is more like a decade or, you know, 10 to 12 years, you know, you were talking about just starting your company here, but you have done years of Amazon prior to, to starting to teach people. Yes. Same thing with me. I have been working on Amazon since 2008 before I even opened my mouth to teach for the first time. So y'all yes. brace yourself, understand that this is a long-term sustainability. Yes. It has an amazing income, amazing business opportunities. I would never look back and say, Oh, I wish I hadn't. I love what I do. And I love the freedom and income that comes with it, but it's work. It's real work. You're not going to get rich quick and overnight. You've got to learn no. the process. Now let's talk about your process for a second. Cause I know that you love to talk about these super niche categories, which I love because I, I, I can't stand it when people come in. I don't know about you, but I can't stand when people come in and they're like, what are the top name brands? I want to sell Nike and iPhone cases and everything that's like, yeah. they think they're going to get rich on super popular stuff. And I'm like, y'all would not recognize any brand or any item that I sell. It's boring, non-sexy, everyday stuff that people want on a regular basis. So let's yeah. talk about the super niche markets and how you uh, are able to teach people how to make a decent income with those smaller niche products. Yeah, so I think the first thing to say is, uh, I agree with what you were saying, by the way, and we can certainly talk more about all of that. Uh, but the first thing to say is that we look at it, like we call it the Amazon iceberg, right? With, when I'm talking about private labels specifically now. So the Amazon iceberg basically is, well, with an iceberg, there's some of it above the surface, some beneath the surface. And so what we always think is, well, a lot of people teaching private label, they tend to tell you to focus on the tip of the iceberg products, right? So they are selling legitimately tens of thousands of units a day across the board. However, 
they're way too competitive. Uh, way too many people are in there trying to sell those products as well. Akin to what you just said in, in your part of Amazon, you know, selling Nike and all these huge brands and everything else. So, so that's the, the first thing. And we really want to avoid that. Then you've got the middle of the iceberg, which is it connects to the water, it connects to the tops. So it's that middle section. So these are products that feel a little more niche. So like, I don't know, like a cat, a cat carrier or something like that, right? So it's it's more niche down, but it's still very competitive. There's still tons of listings. And it's going to be very hard to rank in there. We like to talk about beneath the surface products, which I will get into. So these are items that do not sell as well. They just don't. They're not massive sellers, but there's proven demand for the products. People are already buying them. What you'll find in these types of products is beneath the iceberg, it's actually a lot bigger than above the iceberg, the surface of the water, which is number one, really cool. And I think number two as well, we like to talk about this idea of the rule of five, right? Because what that means is if you've got five products, right, that's your own private label, you sell them in five different Amazon countries at the same time, which is a, a lot of people freak out at this point, but it's actually very simple. And we've built a whole network of people who can do that type of stuff for our clients. But then you can make five sales per product per day per country. And you're making an average of $5 net profit every time you make a sale. Now, obviously, some products are $10, some are three, some are two. It's just a framework to understand what can happen. So when you five by five by five by five, over a 30-day period of time, you end up with a net profit before tax of $18,750. A lot of people always, oh, get my calculator quick. How the hell is that possible? It's only five items. But with us, really, we are looking at these products that aren't as big sellers, we get them into multiple countries on Amazon, which a lot of people in the private label space do not teach. Uh, that's something we're very big on. Some people, when they're starting out, takes them a bit of time to branch out to other countries. Um, but yeah, it's just really showing you with a small number of products, small number of sales, with that market multiplication, you can build a pretty significant business selling what, I, what we would call super niche or uh, lower co competition products. So that's really how we look at it from a, a 30,000 foot view, you know? I love that concept because so many people, um, and I love the alignment here. I know it wasn't like, I know it's like, you don't always get that magic when, when someone's sitting with you. But the reality is I love this, this alignment because I am all about te teaching those types of things like that below the iceberg where no one really is paying too much attention to it. Yet there's a very, there's a demand. Um, I'm always telling people, you know, you don't have to sell a million products to a million people. You you just have to sell about, a, a, you know, like you said, five products to five people in five different countries every single day. I mean, it really can be this simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be super over the top. It does take some work to figure out those products. Now, the yeah. thing is, is that that's really your basic supply and demand, right? It's like, okay, all of this supply and there's lots of demand for all these big brands, but the real long-term sustainability is underneath that iceberg because anyone can get in and get out of a trend or a niche that, that's, that's super popular and sort of make your mega millions and be gone. Um, but, but we know the reality. The reality is that's a volatile volume game, right? That is all about pushing tons of products for very low profit margins and hope to beat the popularity game to where yeah. the way that we do business is, I mean, it's a similar, it's a similar vein, different strategies, but what we do business yeah. is really smaller, simple, less product, more profit. And so I love how that aligns so well together. So can you dive a little bit into just a little sneak peek behind the curtain of sure. how you, someone's sitting there right now, I can hear them listening going, well, five products in five country. Okay. Five products. Like you're really only selling five products and you can make, you know, this, this big, nice income. Like how, how is a little bit yeah. of your research process to figure out what is niche enough, but not too in demand, but not too, where's the sweet spot there? Yeah, sure. So we do something very different with the way we do private label as well. We don't actually use any like research software or anything like that. Uh, it's just not part of our process. And we can only teach what we've had success with. So that's just how we do it. Now we do have a tr little software that we give our members, which is just basically logging their research but the real gold is in the second piece, which is what you're asking. Like, how do you know whether we should sell it or not? Which I'll, I'll get into. But at a very basic level, then our strategy involves what we call segue searching. Now, what segue searching means is you look at a product and then you look at products that are related to that product. 
And then you open up all these products and new tabs and you start looking at the generic key terms. And I'll get into how do you find the first product in one sec. But we look at the generic key terms of a product, right? So let's say it was plastic shoe box or something like that. And we then want to see a couple of things. The first thing we want to see is the number of results that come back from Amazon. We like that to be less than a thousand if possible for that key term. Now, plastic shoe boxes will not be less than a thousand. <laughs> so so that that's step one. Now, if it's 2000, if it's 422, either way, we're not out of the game yet because we moved to the second stage. So the second stage is we do what we call emulating the customer. And all that means is we just look at what are the search results that have come back for that keyword. And we start to look at the BSRs, the best seller ranks of all those products. And that actually gives us a feel for the size of a market. So we would say 50,000 is the upper limit of what where we would want to go with a product. So obviously then we're looking to see, well, what numbers are the products that are already selling? So if one is say a thousand in home and kitchen and another product that is a similar product is 3000 and another one is 10,000 and another one is 42,000 and there's no more, we would be interested in that market because there's only a few people in it and there's people that are further down the BSR making a lot more sales. There's people at the top making not as many sales. Now, a lot of people ask us, well, exactly how many of should I see? It's really hard to say. So we have a little bit of a, a more than just that as a part of our process. We call it a roots scoring system. So, but at a very basic level, they're the main things that we're looking at. How big is the market? And then we're looking at, at what's out there right now when we actually emulate the customer. So if we see, for example, a bento box as a good example of what we don't want to do, you're going to see pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of bento boxes. Then you're also going to see different colors. You're going to see different sub niches within bento boxes. It's, uh, for, for in my opinion, a nightmare. Now, obviously, there are bento boxes that are making unbelievable amounts of sales. That market, we would just say, is way too big for us. We want to play in much smaller markets. So an example, a seed box. That's a better example, right? It's a box for putting seeds in it. <laughs> wow. But the, that market is more interesting because there's not as many people in it. The competition is nowhere near as fierce, but we can make sales of a product like that. So they're the main things. And the final thing that's kind of hard to talk through without kind of going through it is we have this thing called a roots scoring system. So we rank an opportunity based upon a number of factors like the funds I just mentioned. We also have it in there, like, like how many reviews is it got? Or, you know, how clear is the market? Like, is it obvious what you should be selling? Or is it really not that obvious? What's your good feeling on the product? Is it good, bad? How do you feel about it? And a number of other factors. And that actually gives us a score out of 100. So we have a little algorithm that we've built. And we know if a product scores over 60, it's a, it's a good product. But if it scores obviously less than 60, we want to avoid that market. But we're actually taking into account all these different factors, size of the market, availability of competition. Is it really cloned? Is every product the exact same? And everything in between. And that really just gives us an educated feel for the opportunity. Now, a lot of other people are using software tools that will say like, this product sells X per month that makes this amount of money. But you know, I think that's tricky because a lot of people are using the exact same process and they're looking at the exact same criteria. So we just like to use Amazon. We just love it. And then we use that software I mentioned just to simply rank it and try and see how good or bad is the opportunity. But at a base level, that's what we're doing. And the final, final thing I'll say, a trick to get to interesting markets fairly quickly, we've got a number of them, is you can look at hobbies. So you could go like drawing accessories, look down at all the different products that are available. You can run each of those through that system. So a drawing mannequin is an example I often use. It's like a little stick guy and you can put them into different shapes and draw pictures of them in different poses. So that's like a really nice niche down product that you will arrive at by looking at a drawing product, seeing what are sponsor products related to that one, and then running through the system I just mentioned. Kind of hard to say without showing it, but that's really what we do at a, at a I level. totally get it. it. It's, um, you know, what I, again, more alignment. This is just meant to be here because the same thing with like, I, I'm listening and as I'm, I'm digesting what you're saying, and I'm like really trying not to write like all these voracious notes like I normally do <laughs> just because I'm just really leaning in here. Um, but I love the, the, the mirror image that we have here with our wholesale bundle system and our wholesale bundle framework is literally, yeah, there's, there's literally one piece of software I recommend 
just for a numbers based data kind of snapshot like that, like you said that 30,000 foot view of this is a, around the supply and demand, but I love how you guys are using human instinct because we cannot replace our brain power, our intuition, our, our, our how our brain works to do research uh, what, with a software program. And like you said, everybody else can use different software programs to try to put filters in and filter, filter, filter to try to get what they need. But the reality is when we really put the customer hat on and say, what are the customers looking for? What do they want? What do they need? It's so much easier to arrive at a product that they're willing to buy when we're using our brains rather than software to try to get a quick fix. So I love that your program yeah. really focuses on using our brains and using them the way that, that they should be used rather than just typing a few filters into a software yeah. system and hoping it will, you know, spit out some good profit for you. You know, this is, this is why these business models work. This is why what you're doing is helping so many people and wholesale bundles are helping people because yes. it's really, you know, it's like, if you, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day, if you teach him to fish, he eats forever. Right. And so we're really teaching people how to research so that they can do this for life. And so exactly. I love how exactly how you guys are doing that within these yeah. smaller niches that that don't have to be these sexy bestsellers at the beginning and doing and doing those yeah. sort of things. I, I think as well, just to pick up on something you mentioned earlier on as well, uh, when you look at there's lots of different options available to sell on Amazon, and obviously what you do is fantastic and is incredibly valid. And there's pros and cons equally with private label. It, there's pros and cons to that model as well. And I think the more important thing though is to look at like, what do you want from a, from your business and really to understand whether you're doing wholesale bundling or private label. Uh, it's not necessarily an either or actually as well. It can be a both end because like you said, you do pr some private label also. You obviously do lots of wholesale bundling. I am actually at the stage now where I want to give our clients more options too because private label is fantastic. But at the end of the day, when you're starting out, you have to get the items produced. You have to get them shipped in via C. We always recommend C. Air is okay for a few units, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to just ship a lot of bigger products if you're using air freight. And it really doesn't make sense to cut yourself off if you know your numbers. And so I think as well, it's like, well, why not have more bites of the Amazon cherry, I suppose is a decent analogy, uh, I guess. Uh, so I think it makes sense, you know, so for me, that's where I'd be excited about bringing across what you're doing to our people too, because if you can have a number of different ways to sell on Amazon, you're getting more out of the platform and you will make money faster when doing things like wholesale bundling, because you can get into stock faster. And then you have your longer tail private label stuff happening. And all of a sudden you've got a, what we would call a mini empire going on. And I think that's really exciting. Absolutely. And I, that, that's what I love about doing some of these things is that you have a, the ability to diversify what you're offering. And this is for, this is why I'm always telling people, they know one of my biggest catchphrases is long-term sustainability. If you ask me about a business decision, I'm going to say, how does this support your long-term sustainability? And if it doesn't align with that, it's got to go. Yeah. And the thing about what, that's what I love. I, I call wholesale bundles, like I used to call it poor man's private label <laughs> because <laughs> it really is creating your own brand. It really is putting some wholesale products together that are already produced by other companies, bringing something in that you're bringing new or different to the table and bringing a combination that really people love. The reason I even started wholesale bundles was because I didn't have pockets deep enough to wait a year to start making money while I was importing and creating products and things like that. So I thought I've got to do something now and then. So it really does bring an amazing diversification to it because it's got all the value benefits of private label, which is why this is such a perfect marriage here for, for talking about these two, two business strategies that we yeah. have, because you can, it's not just a one size fits all. You can do multiple no. things. You can do private label and white label and, and wholesale and wholesale bundles and have a very well-rounded empire. I love that word yeah. um, to, to kind of fuel the fire there. And you know, when you're an idea person, which I know that you are, um, when you're an idea person, you can't help yourself anyway you're always coming up with oh this could be a product this could be a product what about this niche what about that niche so you have to have all the places to let go and put in on all those uh, different ideas so that's fantastic so tell me a little bit more about your community about um marketplace heroes and what you guys are all about there yeah so the the cool thing about when we started marketplace superheroes was we were like well we'll just teach this to a few people and it never really was supposed to be this 
big thing, you know, uh, it really wasn't. We were still selling on Amazon, which we are still. Uh, that's, and we just did it part time. But as time has gone on, we started to build our community and we realized this could be a, a lot bigger in a way where we can actually partner with our clients long term. That's always been our goal. So we started in 2014, like we mentioned, 2015, we really kicked off, we started getting a lot more people into our program. And I would say in the last two years, two and a half years, we've been able to move things on to a whole other level simply because we've made some money from our education as well as our coaching and things like that. Had a lot of successful students. And then what we just said was, let's just double down because we tried to get freight partners and things like that. We realized, you know, these people are just not going to give us what we what we need in order for students to succeed. So we decided to basically invest as much of our money as we could into building that freight company. So we put a couple of million dollars into that freight business now over the last two years, and it's been really, really built up. We've got, I think, 2,000 different unique products that we ship from ourselves and our members, which is really, really cool. And our community is the reason we built that. You know, I mean, we have these amazing people who, in many cases, are working in corporate jobs, and they decided they want to build a business, and Amazon just makes sense to them. And a lot of our clients maybe looked at different things like arbitrage and stuff like that, but they settled on private label because they liked the idea of owning their own brand, of building that up, and maybe in the future, selling that brand or whatever the case may be. So, so they're the people that really love Marketplace, what Marketplace Superheroes is all about. Uh, and again, I'm really intrigued with what you have to offer because I just think it sounds really interesting and, and something that we definitely should all be looking at. But anyway, yeah, the community is amazing. You know, we have such a great, just great people in there who are real people who are going and doing the work as well, because I think that's the hard part of most online courses, let's call them, that you might have all these people and very few people actually do anything with the material. But with our community, it's nice because we're able to be very transparent with the numbers. We know we have about 1,200 people in our freight company shipping products. We can tell people we're going to ship about 8 million units this year, and we can report on that as the year goes on. We can tell people that that's going to translate to about $200 million in revenue for the community. So that's really what it's about, you know, people, transparency, and partnering. That's our big thing. Like, if we can be shipping your products and we can be saving you a bunch of money, that's a real win-win relationship. And that's exciting for us because we want to be with these people for the long term. Whereas in the private label space specifically, there's a lot of different educators and a lot of them just want to sell really high price things and not offer all these services, send you all over the place. And for us, we actually built the freight company, but we also built this thing called the ecosystem. So the ecosystem is like, is pretty cool. It's a one-stop shop basically for private label where you come in, you can log your research and you can use that roots scoring thing I talked about. But then when you're ready to ship, you can do your freight inside the app. We actually speak to the supplier on your behalf. We do all that complicated stuff that is such a pain. And I know you've imported lots of stuff, so you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. And uh, we also do all translations and listings and all that kind of jazz. So it really is a partnership and, uh, and it's really cool, you know? I, I love that because you know what, that, that's one of the hardest things for people who start with online business or e-commerce or any of those things is that they're, they're perhaps, you know, I, I make some assumptions here, but I've also talked to many, many clients here that have come from this. They're used to maybe a nine to five where they're going around, you know, to a corporate job or something like that, but they're tired of the drag. They're tired of the drive. They're tired of that sort of thing. But then they go to switch from on to, to something online and then they miss a little bit of that camaraderie. They, risk, they miss a little bit of that putting heads together and team player kind of thing and saying, how do we, how do we, it all becomes yes. I, and you become so responsible for every single thing and every move you make, and it becomes very heavy. So to have a community where people can come and like you said, be transparent, be honest about things, be honest about their struggles, be honest about their wins, you know, it yeah. really creates a sense of independency yet uh, community that you feel supported yes. you feel like you can go one more minute, even when you feel like you're just ready yes. to, to tap out. So I love that, yeah. that you're building a community and partnership because partnership is everything. A lot of yeah. people don't see it um, in, in today's world and everything else. I mean, you look, you just open Instagram for two seconds and it looks like everybody is this self-made millionaire. But the reality that we know is that 
everything is built in community. Everything is built with support and help. I have never met a single man or woman who has made it to the top of anything in their lives that did it all by themselves, because that is just so that is not reality. Reality is we all have a team behind us one way or the other, whether it's family, friends, work, supportive community. So appreciate you bringing community as part of, of your, um, you know, marketplace Absolutely. and what you're doing. I, I think as well, I'm sure you find this with your own uh, community as well. I, I, I agree with everything you said. And the big thing as well is where do I go if I have a question and I just need to know the answer? Like things come up in the private label journey, in the journey that, that you bring your clients on and hopefully bring some of our clients on too. Uh, but like, the, the, things happen and you need to have somewhere to turn. Like I had Robert when I started, he was my initial mentor. And if not for him and him putting his hand on my shoulder at different times and saying, do it, even though I would have felt like, oh, I'm too afraid. I'm too afraid. But when you have someone experienced who's there for you, will answer your question, will tell you the next step. That's really, really critical. And that's why I believe online education done right is really important. I think courses, I'm sure you've seen it too, I'm not saying with your own course or my course, but just in general, there's kind of like being a weird, oh, ah, courses are like this or that or the other kind of a negativity towards online courses. I'm going to tell you something. Online courses have taught me pretty much everything I know. Robert taught me a ton, but everything else I've learned through online courses or books. And I think that at the end of the day, who would you rather learn wholesale bundling from, private label from? Would you rather learn it from, you know, made up things in your head trial and error are people who have actually been there and done it because at the end of the day i cannot sell robert cannot sell we cannot sell every single private label product in the world there's 350 million items been sold on amazon so there's no way we can sell them all anyway and there's no way you can do all of what you do so we have to uh, understand that but also understand there is actually like the size of amazon is hard to comprehend no matter what you sell and to understand there is room for a lot of people. And also what we often say, and this is our kind of manly thing, you maybe not say something like this. We say the competition is weak. That's our, <laughs> one of our lines. And it's true. Okay, so people- my take on that is I, I tell my people all the time, your competition is lazy. That's what there we go. So we're very, we are the same. Yes, your competition. Okay, weak is fine, but I say lazy because that's really what it takes. There's a that's particular true. group of of people, and I, you know, I won't name names or anything like that. But the, the, it it really gets to me because you know, obviously, we're we're very aligned in fact that we really care about people and we care about their success and we want them to win. And we know that there's we we have a an abundance mentality. We know yes. that there's enough room for everyone and there's enough piece of the pie for everyone to share, and we don't have to be copycats. But I I would tell, I always tell my people, your competition is lazy. They only want to ride other people's coattails. They want to wait for people to do the research first and then kind of jump on until that fizzles out. Those are the people lowering all the prices on all the things. Those are the people that are just trying to make a quick dollar. Just hang in there because they won't last, but you will. The hard work pays off in the end when you do it up front. Because some people come and they look at my framework and they go, well, that's a lot of work up front. And I said, you're dang right. It's a lot of work up front. I said, your competition is lazy and they won't do this. But if you do this, this is the kind of success that you will find when okay. you are doing the hard work up front and you're really going it all in. So, you know, th- yes. those are just really important things. The competition is weak and lazy. And because they are, that's just more margin for us. Uh, yeah. I, and I, I love what you said there. And I would also mention for any of these businesses, you actually want a front loaded business where you're putting the effort in at the start, like you mentioned, you're putting all this in, you're building all these assets and stuff like that. Some of it takes time in the private label game to get into stock and all that. You actually, in my opinion, you want that because as you say, they're lazy, they won't do it. I agree with that. But also that front loaded work for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. On the other side of that, then you have what people don't have. You have products available for sale. You have them in our case available for sale in multiple countries. You've all that work that you did is going to pay off because you now have an asset that can sell without you having to be there every single day. You've got Amazon with private with their FBA uh, system, which makes it super easy to automate all the day-to-day work, pretty much everything. In our space, we get a handful of questions a week that are specific to a product, but our products are really simple. Like how many questions can you have about a seed box? (laughs) Not that many. Uh, And that's really it, you know, and that is, uh, Amazon is still and will be 
an amazing business model and there's many of them but the private label wholesale bonding whatever we're talking about there's opportunity in all of it and there will be for a number of years i mean if you actually look at amazon's growth curve i laugh when people say amazon's saturated it's just so funny because uh, even um in the last say since we really kicked off in 2015 teaching this stuff amazon's quadrupled in size in terms of the, the amount of sales it's doing and also even if you look at last year well 2019 2021 is not finished yet it was $280 billion transacted in 2019, 2020, I think it was $386 billion, something like that. So the growth is off the chart and it's continuing that way. And even with COVID, like it's been a pain for us all, but it has pushed on even further growth in Amazon. And obviously some stores are going to open up and that's happening. I know the US is a lot more open in many states than it is over here, but people are not going to go back fully to the way of the past, like they are going to be staying on Amazon and places like that a lot more. So to me, the opportunity is growing all the time. And I think the more ways you have to skin this particular cat, the better. So I couldn't be more excited about, you know, sharing what you have. And I'm really excited to be here sharing what we have. Same. I love, I love that too, because it's really true. The more and more, you know, people come to me now, like, and it, it's kind of a joke. You know, I don't see people from very often or whatever. And then, oh, you're still doing that Amazon thing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, and it's still really awesome. And it's doing nothing but growing because at, like, I, again, like with COVID, I know a lot of people have suffered and a lot of people have had a really hard time with, with different things. Um, but the online world, even in the online world, there's some, some industries that were still hit very hard. Um, yes. But th the reality is it opened our eyes to see the global impact of e-commerce and how necessary it is in, in these situations. I mean, if it wasn't for Amazon, some people could not have eaten during COVID because that was their only way to order and ship products to their home. Maybe they were homebound and regardless of what was happening, they couldn't get out or, you know, all these different things. So it really is a blessing and all it is is growing. And so uh, for those of you who think it's too saturated, there's not room for me, we got it. We got to peel back a couple of the layers because yeah, if you want to sell iPhone cases, there ain't room for you. Just saying. <laughs> but if you want to sell yes. some other really cool things, things like you said, I love you mentioned hobbies. I The first part of my framework is literally um, can, there's a worksheet that goes along with finding your knowledge bank and all the different things that you know about, the things that you've done between hobbies and education and, and this and that. And also just to echo what you said on, on online courses. Of course, we're course creators, so we we all hear of all the haters of all the things on online courses. But I'm a college dropout, and I had to drop out of college because they basically said, you know, it's, I don't want to say I was kicked out because it was more like you can't come back until you declare a major. And there was just nothing for me. There was nothing for me to do there. And so I literally started to read books and educate myself on stuff I was interested in. And I love online courses. First of all, I can sit here with my coffee and my PJs and learn whatever. I want the sky is the limit and so I love I love the self-education really if you can go and pick out a course you can learn how to paint you can learn how to play guitar you can learn how to uh, do anything you want from the comfort of YouTube <laughs> exactly I, I I'm still learning every day and uh, and uh, I think as well a uh, uh, thing I always say just about the college thing which I think is interesting is well okay so college you are taught these skills and everything right so we're told well, who certified the person who started the first college? <laughs> who was that? I wonder. Right. But like, it's just funny because I think that's the thing. Like there is a perception that college is the only place to learn things. And sure, there's certain things you've got to go to college for to legally practice medicine and things <laughs> like that. We all know that. But, but really, like there couldn't be a college course on e-commerce because within like right there and then it would be out of date. Like even the stuff we talk about, we're constantly updating the community because things are constantly moving. Like you are doing the same, you know? So learning is live and learning specific business models is live. And you really want to be with people who are in the market actually doing it. And so, uh, that goes for anything, you know? That's so important. The respect level there it is so important because how do you learn? Like you guess you can learn from somebody who has been there, done that, maybe like a retired CEO. And, and there's always a respect level there for for people who have been yeah. there and done it. Um, but there's, there's also that really deep respect level of shoulder to shoulder. And I think that's just what I love about the two of us and what we're doing for the communities out there is that we're shoulder to shoulder with them. We're not standing above them saying, 
oh, I used to do this and this is how it's done. We're walking with them to teach them as we're learning new things. Because like you said, the landscape changes every single day. Just when you think you figured something yeah. out, Amazon's like, just kidding, we have a new rule. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just love the fact that, you know, when we walk with our students, we know the struggle is real. We know what they're going through. We know what they're facing. We know how to help them because we have been walking in the trenches. So um, wrapping up here, I want to ask a couple of, of quick questions before we get to where everyone can find all of your goodies. Um, and of course, I like, I'm, I'm a people person. So this is a little less about business and more about you and, and just your, your life as a person. Um, name yeah. something, what's, what's on your bucket list? What is the something you've got to do before you die? Well, you're, you're going to laugh at this uh, because it's something I'm working on at the moment. One of the things I'm really interested in is uh, mentalism. So it's a form of magic. It's like a mind reading, let's call it, right? I'm actually developing a whole show with, with Amazon related stuff in it and lots of other things. I'm hoping to perform that for companies and for people. And that's something I'm working on. So that's part of my bucket list. It's one of the things I've always wanted to do. Haven't done it. I've, I've read about it for years and I'm developing it now. So there's a strange one for you. I love that. No, that's super fun. I love learning about people and different things because, you know, a lot of times when people are the face of something like you are and you're, everybody's hearing you and seeing you in different places, it's like, well, what, what's that real thing behind that? So I love what that. So who are you? <laughs> yes. I mean, I just, I don't know. I, I'm a people person. I love to learn about people and oh. the different things that they love because there's all kinds of kinds and I love it. Um, so that's awesome. Well, good luck with that. And let me know when you perform that show, hopefully I can come and see it because that would be super Absolutely. fun to do. And let's tell everyone where they can find out more about you and about the marketplace superheroes and all the good stuff you're doing. Yeah, so you could definitely go to marketplacesuperheroes.com, but I'd, I'd really recommend if you want to see a little bit more of what I talked about today, because obviously education is, is critical, you can go over to our YouTube channel and just search Marketplace Superheroes. And there's loads of research videos on there, specifically for private label. I cover that hobby strategy in good detail as well. So just go and check that out, see what you think. And uh, hey, if you learn something, fantastic. I think you learn a lot. And then just uh, just check us out from there. You know, we're we're like you, we're just about giving the value first. And then if it makes sense, great, we'll talk more. And if not, you've learned something new that you can apply to your wholesale bonding business. Like our hobby strategy may just be another cool way to find ideas for that. So yeah, check out the YouTube channel. I'd say it's the best place to go. And you can obviously check out our website as well. And uh, that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephen, for, for this hour of time. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, talking to any other person. So I don't take that wow. for granted. Thank you for your time and your energy. Guys, don't forget to check out the Marketplace Superheroes YouTube channel. And let's not forget about that workshop that's coming up, right? Mommyincome.com slash workshop. If you want to go in person and get roll up your sleeves and build bundles together, I would love to meet you. So mommyincome.com slash workshop. We'll see you same time, same place next week on on the Amazon files.